Once upon a time, in a jungle somewhere south of the equator, there lived a lonely dung beetle named Douglas. Douglas had very shiny wings that glowed in the sunlight. In fact, Douglas's wings were so shiny that when other animals looked at Douglas, they were blinded by his shine and ran away. Even the small amount of light reaching the forest floor made Douglas's wings shine. The only time that the other animals were not bothered by Douglas's shine was during the night when the forest was dark. One day, a howler monkey <laughs> dropped its poop from high up in the canopy onto the forest floor. Douglas and other jungle insects ran and flew to the dung to feed. Douglas had to get to the dung quickly or he would miss an opportunity to eat and find a mate. However, when Douglas arrived at the pile of dung, at least 100 other frantically feeding animals gasped in horror <gasps> at Douglas and began to shield their eyes with their feet. Belinda, the blue morpho butterfly, was graciously flying near the dung pile and feeding on a rotten passion fruit, was especially bothered. Ouch, Belinda said. Your shine is too bright. It's hurting my compound eyes. She exclaimed. Hmm. Douglas immediately felt bad, and because he didn't want to create a problem, he slowly walked away from the dung pile with his head hanging low and set out to find the comforting roots of the walking palm under which he could hide. Douglas did not understand why his shine bothered the other animals. All of the dung beetles he knew also had strange features such as very large horns sticking out of their heads or ridges and bumps on their bodies. Douglas was lonely and hungry because his extra shiny wings prevented him from enjoying a meal of fresh dung and meeting a mate. Inside the safe chamber of the walking palm, Douglas's mind drifted back to the time when he was a young and small innocent larva developing in the safe warm haven of his underground dung ball. No one could see him and be bothered by his shine. Even if they had seen him, he wouldn't have been shiny because he hadn't yet developed his wings. He never had to look for food because the dung ball he was living in provided an endless source. Douglas also remembered the day he emerged from his dung nest and climbed through the earth up to the forest floor. During the time he had been in the dung nest, he had changed from a larva into a pupa and finally into a brand new adult dung beetle. Douglas wondered if he was shiny when he first emerged into the jungle world. Suddenly, Douglas awoke. <gasps> wow, he had fallen asleep and had slept for the entire day. The darkness was coming quickly as the day drew to an end. He could hear the chorus of insects, frogs, and birds around him as night approached. Douglas was impressed with so many sounds, signaling the beginning of activity for some animals and the end of activity for others. Douglas was now alone in the big, dark forest. He usually slept during the night and was not familiar with the nighttime forest. It sure was different than in the daytime. He was somewhat frightened. As he stood alone in the deep, dark jungle, he realized that it wasn't so dark and he wasn't alone. After letting his eyes adjust for a few minutes, Douglas could see. Yay, I can see. Many other animals were also moving around in the forest and the jungle felt truly alive, much more so than during the day. Douglas was wide awake and hungry and he decided that since he could see, he would go in search of some dung. His first stop was a giant leaf of a climbing vine. He perched on the leaf and began to wave his antenna. 
waiting for the scent of freshly dropped dung. I'm waiting very patiently. Suddenly, he smelt fresh dung. That smells like dung. He flew through the trees of the snake-like vine and past the swamp. Flying and flying, then suddenly there it was. A beautiful and fresh pile of taper dung. Wow, what a beautiful and fresh pile of dung. Douglas landed and looked around. He definitely wasn't the first to arrive. There was a large group of insects hovering over the dung. Douglas waited and waited and waited. He didn't even try to eat. He just waited for all the insects to complain about his shiny wings. Five minutes passed, then 10, then 20. And finally, a whole hour ticked by. I'm so hungry. The crowd was starting to leave and the dung pat was much smaller. Then Douglas realized that he had not scared anyone away. He began to jump up and down with joy. Hello, are you okay? Asked a female voice. Douglas looked up. There, standing in front of him, was the prettiest dung beetle he had ever seen. She also looked just like Douglas. Why, yes. Thank you for asking, he replied. Are you going to eat? The dung is starting to dry up and there isn't much left. By the way, my name is Daisy. Hi, Daisy, I'm Douglas. I think you are very pretty, Daisy. Wow, Douglas, I've never heard any beetle say that before. Thank you. Now, why haven't I seen you around before? Well, I'm kind of shy and this is my first time out at night, Douglas said. He felt comfortable talking to Daisy and since they were the only animals now left on the dung pat, he proceeded to tell her his story about his super shiny problem. Douglas, I'm so sorry to hear that you have had such a hard time. However, I think I can solve your problem. Our species is nocturnal. You should always be active at night. Douglas finally understood what the problem had been. He was a nighttime or nocturnal beetle, not a daytime or diurnal beetle. He should sleep in the daytime and eat at night, just like he was doing tonight. <laughs> 